Hello once again AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. Welcome to video number three that's going to cover topic 6.13, improper integrals. In this particular video we're going to take a look at a slightly different function than what we've seen in our first couple of examples. But before we start I want to kind of recap a couple of things that we've talked about already. Let's take a look at the graphing calculator. In a couple of my previous videos, I talked a little bit about finding the area under a pair of curves. And I was really interested in the curves 1 over x squared and 1 over x. And as you can see, I have both of those presented here for you on my graphing calculator. And the thought process was, if we were to find the area under the curve 1 over x squared, the blue curve in this case, and started at 1 and went all the way out to infinity, what's the result that we're going to get. And we talked about how that's interesting in that you can conceivably add a infinite amount of space. You can do that and get a finite answer. And we found out that that answer was actually equal to 1. But when we decided to take the integration of 1 over x from 1 to infinity, that had a completely different result and we found out that that answer was too big to count. It was actually infinite, and therefore we used this idea of divergence. We said that that improper integral diverged. And so you can see that it sort of makes sense graphically that the area under the blue curve is definitely smaller than the area under the red curve, but not only is it smaller, it's countable. If we take a look at the calculator page, we see those two findings that's exhibited by actually taking those two definite integrals. What I want to do in this video is show you a third type of function. So here we go. Our example number three. Evaluate the definite integral of 1 over x squared plus 1, starting at 0 and ending at infinity. By virtue of having the infinity into the upper boundaries position, we know that this is going to qualify as an improper integral. If you remember from our previous videos, we have to set these up by renaming that upper boundary. I typically like to use the letter b, and we will let that b approach infinity as we integrate from 0 up to that arbitrary b. I can't emphasize enough the importance of this step because if this were to appear on the AP Calculus BC exam as a free response question, you would earn a point by setting up the improper integral using correct limit notation. At this point, you have to recall a formula from AP Calculus. So we're going to have to integrate 1 over x squared plus 1. I hope that you all recognize that as an arc tangent of x form. So we have the limit as b approaches infinity. And that limit is going to be b that limit is going to be working on the arc tangent of x as we evaluate that from zero all the way up to b. Now we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. That was the whole idea of getting that infinite symbol away from the boundaries so that we can use the fundamental theorem. So we're essentially going to plug in our b and our zero and subtract. So we'll have something like this. The limit as b approaches infinity of the arc tangent of infinity minus the arc tangent of 0. Now, a little bit of trig knowledge is going to go a long way here. It's really important that students at this stage are comfortable with knowing that the arc tangent of 0 is just equivalent to 0. If the tangent of 0 is 0, then it seems like it makes sense that the arc tangent of 0 would be 0 as well. The tangent curve crosses through the origin. Now for this other portion, um, and, and I actually I kind of want to re correct something here. This should be a b to start with. I don't like the fact that I put an infinity there. It should be a b because I'm plugging in b and 0. But we are going to let that b essentially take on an infinite value. So what we might be thinking, and a lot of times with my students, I like to draw these little thinking clouds. What we are thinking is we have the arc tangent 
of infinity here. The problem is, is I don't advocate you writing that, let's say, on an AP calculus exam solution because you don't want to like plug infinity in for variables because infinity is not a number it's a concept but it's okay to kind of think what is the arctan of infinity what are we becoming when i take the arctangents graph and i get really big with my x values well it's likely that if this is the first time that you've evaluated the arctan of infinity, you're thinking, what the heck is this? And it's likely that you may have forgotten what the graph of arctangent looks like because you took a trig class a long time ago. So let's return to the calculator and remind you a little bit more about what is the arctangent of infinity. So here we are once again with our trusty calculator. You could demonstrate this with whatever model of calculator that you have. Now I'm going to go ahead and enter the arctangent of x, I want to see what that graph looks like. So tangent inverse of x produces this curve here. And I tell you what, I'm going to colorize this curve just a little bit differently uh, because I don't want it to get confused with the black xy axis. So let's make this curve green. And this won't take just but a second to show you. Now, if we do let x get super big, really large, the question that you have to address is what does the y value become? And I'll have to admit, this is a lousy graph to answer that question, right? Tangent graph, arc tangent graph, shouldn't there be a radian type of measurement used along one of the two axes, things that have pi's in them? And the answer is yes, especially when you have an inverse tangent, we should probably use a pi type of increment for the y-axis. So maybe I'll call this pi over 2. And you can see that that would be my first increment right here. Remember, the tangent graph would have pi over 2, pi, maybe 3 pi over 2 is very nice partitions along its x-axis. Now that this is the inverse, those are going to be along the y-axis. And lo and behold, that turns out to be the horizontal asymptote of your graph inverse tangent of x. And that probably makes sense if you think about the tangents graph as having a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. Let's return to the document and we'll finalize our answer. So to conclude, we can say that this arc tangent of infinity is really just going to produce a value of pi over 2 eventually. Right, So this is what we're thinking. And so the best way to answer this question is you could say that the answer is pi over 2. There's nothing wrong with that. But a better answer might be using the phrase converges to pi over 2. You have to keep in mind that this journey that we're taking in order to find the area under this curve is perpetually ongoing. And so while we may never reach this area of pi over 2, we find ourselves getting closer and closer to it. Oftentimes you're going to see this as the multiple choice answer options uh, when you're working on those kinds of questions. So good advice, always keep this in your back pocket. Arc tangent of infinity is going to be pi over 2 because you tend to see it from time to time throughout your, imp inner, uh, your improper integral lessons. Anyway, I hope this helps. I want you to stick around for some future videos over improper integrals. We'll see you next time.